Welcome to Owanapedia once again, the one-stop center for Uganda's history and the history of the rest of the world. My name is Tony Geoffrey Owana, and as usual, in control of core operations is Herbert Semiano. We are in a lockdown once again, and all I can say is that be very, very careful sticking to Noah's Ark or Sebeni's Ark. That is where the safety is. It is not comfortable, it is not enjoyable, but it is better to follow the SOPs until such a time as when the dove will be sent on a mission out there and not come back to indicate that the floods are over. COVID is no longer the joke you thought it was during the campaigns. It is very real. That's the hard part. We are honored today to have amidst us a leading statesman of Africa by the name of Dr. Mali Mujurias Nyerere. As you all know, he has subsequently led struggles in Africa that have resulted into independence of many millions of Africans. I need not add his contribution to our own liberation here in Uganda, which you are all aware of. I should take some time here to explain a bit about the Resistance Council system, which was conceived, organized, and delivered by the National Resistance Movement under the leadership of His Excellency Musei Wakazi Yoweri Museveni is as old as the struggle of the National Resistance Movement is. This, needless to say, is a very significant departure from the politics of the past. This is very, very significant in that it is for the first time that we are having true and popular democracy in Uganda. We are back with what we do best. There has been a short break, which for some of you have been quite long, and uh, we've been packaging as of now take you back to the month of July, and we are in July now, but this is July 1988, when Uganda hosted a very, very important son of Africa, Mwalimu Julius Kabarabi Mwerele. He was here for a whole week, I think, between the 10th and 17th of July, and he addressed Ugandan leaders, visited parts of the country, before addressing a great press conference before he went back home to Tanzania. Now, we start this at his address to Ugandan leaders at the International Conference Center, an event that was well covered by the Presidential Press Unit, commanded by the one and only James Magaho. When they converged at the Conference Center, the event was opened by the one and only Colonel Dr. Giza Resige, who was at that time the National Political Commissioner of the NRN, and also Minister of State in the Office of the President, which president was none other than Yoweri Kabuta Museveni. You are going to see a very young and a brilliant Resige enunciating the principles of the National Resistance Movement as they are hatched in the bush, especially the Resistance Council system, which we used to call RSC. He explained how it was the epitome of democracy, the type of which Uganda and the world had never enjoyed before. Am I going to speak for him? No. Wikipedia welcomes you to that event as it was opened by the one and only Dr. Kinza Resi. Stay tuned. Uganda International Conference Center in Kampala was privileged to host Mwalimu Julius Nyerere, former president of the United Republic of Tanzania, addressing the district administrators, chairman RSC5, 
NRM political mobilizers from the 33 districts of Uganda. And that was on Sunday morning of 17th July 1988, on the fourth day and final day of his visit to Uganda, but in particular to the National Resistance Movement, NRM. Mwalim Julius Kambarage Nyerere, who was on a fourth day visit in the country, is the chairman of the Chama Chama Pinduzi CCM, in short, Tanzania's ruling party, and at the same time, the chairman of the South Commission. Mwalimu Julius Nyerere was invited to address the seminar participants who attended a one-week seminar at Makerere University Kampala, which lasted from 9th up to 18th of July this year. You very well remember that President Yoweri Museveni, who is the chairman of the National Resistance Movement, was among the speakers to the seminar participants during that week. And for those of you who watched television during that week, you very well remember that President Museveni's address touched on the Uganda's economy as well as the recently presented national budget for the financial year 1988-89. So this time, these seminar participants could not miss listening to Mwalimu Nyerere, one of the greatest statesmen of Africa, and at the same time, one of the few who have managed to build one stable and united country. And those present included the vice chairman of NRM, Haji Moses Chigongo, the first deputy prime minister, Honorable Eria Kategaya, the third deputy prime minister, Haji Abbeka Mayanja, cabinet ministers, the Army Commander Major General Elit Mwine, the Vice Chancellor Makere University Professor George Chiria, Captain Jacob Asimwe, who is the Administrative Secretary at the NRM Secretariat, and many other senior government officials. Minister of State in the Office of the President, who is also the National Political Commissar, Dr. Chizabesje, welcomes the President and Mwalimu Nyerere. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Your Excellency, the Chairman of Chama Chamapinduzi of the United Republic of Tanzania, your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, the district chairman of the councils, the district administrators, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored today to have a ministers a leading statesman of Africa by the name of Dr. Mwari Mujurias Nyerere, who is seated here in front of us. We are indeed grateful to him for having allowed to spare this time this morning, 
this Sunday morning to come and share a few words with us. As you all know, he has a host of experience behind him. He led his country to independence. He has subsequently led struggles in Africa that have resulted into independence of many millions of Africans. I need not add his contribution to our own liberation here in Uganda, which you are all aware of. Let me therefore take this opportunity, Your Excellency, to welcome you to this meeting this morning. You are most welcome. Your Excellency, this meeting was called for a purpose, and it has been a coincidence, a very fortunate one, I must say, that it also took place at a time you are visiting this country. It is constituted of the chairman of the resistance committee five. This is uh, a committee, the, uh, the executive committee of the district. Maybe I should take some time here to explain a bit about the resistance council system. Your Excellencies, the resistance council system, which was conceived, organized, and delivered by the National Resistance Movement under the leadership of His Excellency Musei Wakazi Yoweri Museveni, started is as old as the struggle of the National Resistance Movement is. When it started, it started in the struggle as clandestine committees when the National Resistance Movement and the National Resistance Army were still struggling for the liberation of this country in 1981. The peasants of this country we are for the first time organized and guided to struggle for their own rights and freedoms. And the organization took the form of these committees right from the village. The village, all members who live in a village by virtue of their residence constitute the village council and they sit and choose amongst themselves nine members who form the village committee, which we call the Resistance Council number one, and the Resistance Council Committee number one. That is the primary committee. And everyone in Uganda today is a member of RSC one wherever he resides. This, needless to say, is a very significant departure from the politics of the past. Because for the first time, everyone, irrespective of his previous political inclination, can sit together with all the other members and deliberate on matters that affect him, his, 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 his well-being. As you all know, previously, whenever you belonged to a party or the other party, if it was not in power, you were irrelevant until the next elections. But today, under this organization of the RC1 participation, every member of this country freely enjoys the participation of these resistance councils. That is the RC1, which is the basis of the councils that culminate in the RC5, whose chairmen are gathered here. From the RC1, these nine members in a parish 
constitute the parish council, all the nine members from the various RC ones, constitute the parish council, and similarly sit and amongst themselves elect other nine members to form the RC2 committee. And the RC2 committees, these nine members of the various RC2 committees in a sub-county, or what is commonly known as the Gomborra here, then constitute the RC3 council. And the RC3 councils, so similarly elected, the, the RC committees, the RC3 committees, so similarly elected, in a county form the RC4 council. But at that level also of the RC3, every RC3 also elects two members who then go to the district to form the district council. So from every RC3, you have two representatives elected from that council to go direct to the district council. So at the district council, you have direct representation from every sub-county. And then, at that district, the members of that council sit and elect their committee, whose chairman, that committee is the RC5, whose chairman are uh, among this gathering here before you, your excellencies. And that is the first ingredient of the, meet, of the constitution of this meeting this morning. This, of course, as I said, is very, very significant in that it is for the first time that we are having true and popular democracy in Uganda. And it is a thing which has been taken up by the population because they have, for the first time, known that they can have power and exercise it by themselves. And they are prepared to defend that given power and this institution of the councils. The second ingredient of this gathering, Your Excellencies, is the district administrators. District administrators are the political heads of the districts. These are political, these are appointed. For my purposes, I call them the district commissars because they are the people who are in charge of articulating the programs of the movement within the district and causing political guidance and leadership within that district. Your Excellencies, Our problems in Uganda for all these years have been as a result of political confusion. We have never had other problem apart from politics. Our problem has not been a military problem. Our problem has not been an economic problem, but a political problem. And um, we think that this has been as a result of some Few people who have ganged them, who had ganged themselves into cliques, exploiting the ignorance of our population, because the political awareness of our population was deliberately kept very low, so that they can be adequately exploited. This is why, Your Excellencies and um, our guest of honor this morning, you had in the past that our population was uh, divided along unprincipled lines. You'd find people emphasizing divisions like those of religion, of tribe or region, to, to, to try and use those platforms to advance themselves. Obviously, for evil, for evil reasons. 
And now, for the first time, therefore, we are putting emphasis on the question of raising the political understanding and awareness of our population. And it's for that reason that we have these commissars, the district administrators, who should themselves have internalized the political understanding of the National Resistance Movement, the programs they are in, and who would be able to communicate these to the population and cause the population to understand what affects them and how they can solve their own problems. Of course, Your Excellency, one of their duties is also to coordinate and supervise developmental projects within their own areas of jurisdiction. In this role, we have also created a new institution known as the District Development Committee. In the District Development Committee, we have this DA as a chairman, but we also have members, one member from every sub-county of these RSEs who is a member of the District Development Committee. The purpose of which is to make sure that there is adequate representation in the District Development Committee so that all the developmental problems, ideas, emanating from the various localities up to the village can be articulated by this committee and championed for the, for the development of the whole area in that locality. And uh, this has given us uh, interesting results already. And it's an institution which uh, is going to be more active in the political future of this country. That is the district administrators of the various districts. We have 33 of them, and they are all gathered here. The other element of this meeting is what we call the mobilizers, mass mobilizers. These are young ladies and gentlemen. Some are also uh, uh, middle-aged and elderly, who have volunteered to do this role of working in the population to try and arouse their interest in the political ongoings in the country, to try and interest them in the First of all, find out their problems, because the problems of this country vary from locality to locality. And it would be very sumptuous for some people in Kampala here to start chatting out programs without taking into consideration the various peculiarities in our population. Therefore, these mobilizers, they are commonly known as cadres, uh, though that is uh, a descriptive term uh, <laughs> of a specific quality which I, I refrain from using myself because some of them don't mark up to that uh, uh, qualification. We keep on bringing them up. They are supposed to therefore work closely within the population. Right now we have at least some people in every sub-county and they work deep in the population, supposed to find out the problems, educate them on the programs of the movement, and uh, monitor and encourage them to, to support developmental projects within their localities, and finally to give us a feedback on what exactly is happening in those localities so that we can articulate them into a modified program which takes into account all these peculiarities of our people. These members of our, of our meeting here have all passed through the National School of Political Education. 
The National School of Political Education is an institution which we created also at the, ons at the, at the onset of which there was a debate because there are some people who are saying, ah, you are taking our people to teach them communism, to teach them this, to teach them what? Marxism. So, but uh, uh, finally, they, they have realized that this is not true. Uh, they find that at this school, we teach them our problems. We try to have an exchange on our problems. What are the political problems of Uganda? And what were, the, what were the basis of those problems? What do we need to do now to overcome these problems? And therefore, these uh, members of this gathering, the third constitu constituent of this gathering, is a product of those schools who are now working very closely with the population. And we called them here for this seminar to try and review the political situation in the country on various fronts, to have an interaction with them, to update them on what has been going on. For example, recently, Your Excellencies, we had uh, the budget for this year, which budget was uh, uh, taken in with mixed feelings, I'm sure, because of the various levels of appreciation of our problems. And therefore, such would be uh, an opportunity for us to give them equal understanding of the problems of the considerations that led us to take certain positions in that budget. Also, Your Excellency and uh, our guests of honor, we are today going through a very active and rapid uh, a change of rapid, uh, a period of rapid changes in the political seen in the political scene of Uganda. We are, we are, as I told you, we have been involved in creating these RSCs up to the district. We are now at the stage of moving from the district to the National Resistance Council, which is the Supreme Body, uh, which shall be filled by these direct representatives of the people. That is one of the things which is uh, taking place, which we can use this uh, gathering to, to exchange on how best to, to, to achieve this. We are, in a, we are in a period when we are beginning to have discussion on the constitution of this country. And uh, the constitution will have to be discussed and ultimately agreed on by everybody. And these are some of the members who will have to do that. Therefore, since I'm not, I'm not the speaker, sorry for uh, getting into a lot of details, I think we should spare a lot of this morning's time for our guests who will be leaving later on to, commun to communicate to us a piece of his vast experience, as I've said. And therefore, once again, I must say that we are privileged to have you and we welcome you. And therefore, I take this opportunity and honor to call on His Excellency, the President of Uganda, to come forward and greet you and be able to invite our guest of honor for this morning to address us. Thank you very much. That is the one and only Dr. Kizabesi, and we are very proud to have brought you here. Basically, who some of you know very little about, or actually nothing about you. When we get back, we shall be with President Yoel Museveni, who Dr. Tavisi has invited to give his address to this August gathering, courtesy of one people. You are 
एक्सेलेंस से मारिमो